Welcome to the Straight Out of Home Video Podcast, part of the Geeky Waffle Network. Today we're talking about recess, taking the fifth grade. I'm Candace, and with me is my fellow Waffle, Arzu. Hey, Arzu. Hello. Okay, so recess, taking the fifth grade came out December 9th, 2003, along with recess all growed down which we have to watch too it was like a package deal you get you can't get one without the other unlike other of these kind of like direct to home movies for recess these are three newly made half hour episodes that is set after the theatrical release recess schools out Mm -hmm. so this is like a series finale really for recess which i had never seen before yeah i was surprised i thought this was like the other recess thing we did where it was like a bunch of episodes in one and then when they're all like we're in fifth grade now i'm like that's so big for like a kid's show to change the status quo like that you expect everything to reset at the end because so many shows sitcoms do that but they're in the fifth grade they now have um they have a new teacher who is (laughs) miss finster as their teacher finster's their teacher it's so bad for them I actually feel bad for Miss Minster. I think it's just an everybody. adult now. But. Something that I'm really lo- loving about watching this as an adult now is like how serious everything is and how extreme. Because that's what it feels like as a kid. Yeah. Like the first part of the story is there's these new rules that the BOE, the Board of Education, came out with, which is um, no more recess, no pizza. So they have like like slop and stuff like that. Nutritional so, uh, paste. Yes, exactly. And TJ goes on strike and there are like all the kids are supporting him. There's news crews. There's helicopters coming out. There's um, the like- The Board kind of, of like, Education a- is basically the CIA. Exactly. Like they make a phone call and they're like, and then they make it to their secret agent, Mr. White, who I don't know if you remember because I think this was part of the last one we did. He was in the episode where TJ started saying womps and they were saying that it's a bad word. I don't think I was on this one. Okay. So it was this huge thing like TJ and the other kids are like that womps. And I guess I thought it was slang for something else. So he he like had this very um, dramatic court hearing about it. And he defeated Mr. White then. So that was like how they have their history. The return of Mr. White. Mr. White, who's like kind of like James Bond-esque wearing a tux. And like, you know, he's the secret agent of the Board of Education. Which just is so funny to me. How powerful the Board of Education is, which I guess makes sense. I just thought. And I, I love that the principal... Principal Prickly is like, I don't agree with this kind of stuff, but, you know, I have to do what the Board of Education tells me to do. It's very much just so dramatic. I can't get over it. But it was like an interesting, like, a lot of them had really, I think, insightful points to make at the end of the episode. Like, you know, because every kid's program kind of has like that moral at the end. But I was shocked by how not only on the nose, but like relevant all the morals were. Yeah. In this one. So the, the moral for the first episode i guess was you know just like you don't have to go along with the status quo if it's making you unhappy and you shouldn't be afraid to rock the boat yeah protest actually works yeah and like even the board of education is like well i never liked this i just didn't want to go against what everybody else was saying and yeah like yeah it's good for a kid to see yeah uh, the next one is they're fifth graders now. So that means they're like upperclassmen because this school, I think, is, it's fifth and si- sixth grade is as high as they go in elementary school. It's, ours just went fifth grade. But um, there's a secret club apparently that is very <laughs> extreme that only the fifth and sixth graders can go to. It has like a soda machine. It has like a hot tub. We've got a steam room, a pool table. And I'm just like, who is paying for this? <laughs> this underfunded public school somehow has a steam room for their upperclassmen. And honestly, this is what I kind of had an issue with is like, okay, so 
Mikey and Gus are really loving hanging out there. They are like all the cool kids, all the mean kids in fifth and sixth grade stop being mean because they're all like, oh, we're we're grown ups now, you know? There's equality inside the inside the clubhouse. Yes. And they make fun of the little kids. And TJ and the gang are like getting really annoyed with Mikey and Gus. And I'm yeah. like, I thought at first, I'm like, oh, no, this is a good lesson. When people grow up, sometimes they grow apart. But they would never do that. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> so, like, TJ and the gang leak the information about this clubhouse. And I was like, I felt like that was kind of mean. I don't know. I felt like. Maybe it's just my inner, like, I don't like the bullies at any stage of life. I'm like, you deserve to have your fun ruined because you're the bullies. Snitches get stitches. That's my motto in life. <laughs> Snitches get stitches, but also, like, bullies don't deserve nice things. I <laughs> so don't. I'm like, you know what? You get you lose your steam room privileges. <laughs> I can't get over that. Steam room. <laughs> and I just love that there was, like, a secret code and it was those, like, blocks that you flip on a playground to, like, play tic-tac-toe. Yeah, like yeah, it was it's hilarious. Yeah, there's a new king because like the recess playground has a king. Yes, which I always who, found amusing. Who actually does dictate like law for yes. everybody? It has guards and you know gets people in I, trouble. This cracked me up. Was right before they tell the kids about the the clubhouse. Um, they're like the new king wants to see you, and the kids are all like, oh. TJ, maybe he heard about your protest and he wants to make you a knight. Oh, what an honor. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Y'all have just accepted this and you're rolling with it. Like, it's not weird. It's part of the recess experience. You have a king. I guess. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So the Halloween part, third part of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. They're so actually some part made me really crack up so spinelli is used to be really into halloween but then she got made fun of by the bigger kids at a pumpkin patch and she's like i'm not trick-or-treating anymore i'm not dressing up i'm not doing I'm too anything old for halloween yeah did you trick-or-treat as a kid i did yeah i, I had to stop because we moved away um yeah right for, before my fifth grade so naturally that's when it stopped but yeah. I stopped, I think, in middle school, actually. I was, like, holding out. I was like, I'm going to go as far as I can, you know, like, as long as I can. I, like, on my street, we have, you know, upper middle schoolers, maybe early high schoolers. I mean, the high schoolers, like, are probably just hanging out with each other, but, like, who still come by? And I'm like, whatever. Like, yeah. you're out. You're with your friends. You're not causing trouble. Like, have a chocolate bar for your troubles. Like... <laughs> Honestly, in middle school, I remember in homeroom, we would play poker for Halloween candy. <laughs> That's so mercenary. <laughs> it was so much fun. You bring the candy you didn't want and you would like ante up. Like, oh, oh here's so a funny. Here's a Skittles. All right, I see your Skittles with a snicker. Well, <laughs> if it works. <laughs> it was a lot of this land. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. Not a good time. But yeah, so Spinelli is giving out candy and the gang is like sad that she's not joining them and they're like wait if Spinelli's too old we're the same age as her so one of the okay the thing that really made me laugh they're like oh we always go by this abandoned prison and it's terrifying and we always run past oh my it God, right. it's always so scary and then some of the bigger kids stop them and they're like that's not a prison that's the DMV <laughs> I lost. Which feels like a prison. Yes. It just cracked me up so much. They're like, oh, it's just an office building. I'm like, no, children, it is not. So I feel like that definitely was for the the parents or adults watching. <laughs> oh, 100%. I think I feel like the DMV is one of those things where even as a kid, you know it's hell. Yeah, because you have to go you your don't parents. know how. And it's so boring. It's not even just like what you hear from your parents, like through like – what you see on TV, like, you know, the DMV is like, yeah, something to fear. Even though I will say the one in Florida down here has really gotten their stuff together. It is a seamless process now. Very I'm nice. very glad to be an adult at this time, <laughs> you know, and to live in this age of the DMV actually rolling through. 
but yeah so that was funny um there's a hustler kid which i totally forgot about in the series like he can get you like any contraband you want oh, and hustler Spinelli, kid? yeah spinelli's like let me use your cell phone and i was like oh my god the hustler kid has a cell phone like you know like drug dealers did at the time because i'm like who has a cell phone in the 90s and he's dressed like richard nixon yes <sighs> oh my god the show this was a, a lot more fun than i think the christmas one was yes i agree i liked um i liked some of the christmas one like the musical yeah the kids put on i thought was cute but otherwise but i really love the lesson that they had with this halloween thing is like yeah you might like grow out of some of the halloween stuff but you can still find like joy and fun in it because like as someone who loves halloween who loves going to haunted houses even though they're scared of everything um who loves a good spook and ghost and all ghouls it's like yeah you just like you wrote your love of Halloween, your love of things like that kind of just grows and change. You can still find the magic in it. Yeah. Do you know I worked at one of the haunted houses a few times when in college? I did not know this. Yeah, at a major theme park in the area. Okay. I was a no, scare scare actor. Some of my friends worked at the, the Halloween, what we call, it used to be called Fear Fest here. Now it's called Halloween Haunt. But some of my friends used to work there. I did not because I'm a wimp. Um, I wanted nothing to do with it, but my friends did work there. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fun to scare people. No, it's not. Yes, it we is. have coward pumpkins here for the Halloween event. Like, if you're going with your friends, but you don't enjoy it, they're like glowing pumpkins you can wear around your neck so that the scare actors know not to jump. Coward. Out that is a Why coward pumpkin. If like all your friends are going, but you would rather not be they jumped don't out. Go. At- <laughs> Peer pressure is a thing, especially in high school. Like, if I had had those in high school, I would have gone more often, but I didn't, so I just didn't go. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a really great one. And, yeah, overall, it's a fun one. It's cute. Yeah. It reminded me, like, why I loved that series as a kid. Yeah, same. Same. Recess was one of the ones I really liked. Yeah, it was always, like, a fun watch because it was also on like Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, Saturday morning cartoons. You get your sugary cereal. Ah, the life. Even though now I'm like, I can buy sugary cereal because I'm an adult with money. Same. And yeah, and I can watch cartoons whenever I want because I have like things like Disney Plus, you know? Yeah. It's not the same. It's, it doesn't feel the same. Could also be because I had to pay for that ser- sugary cereal. <laughs> well, it's not just that we have to pay for the cereal and the streaming service, but like, you know, when you're a kid and it's Saturday morning, so you don't have any responsibility. You're up yes. before anybody yeah. else. The cereal is the food you can make yourself. You make it mm-hmm. yourself and you go and you sit and you do your own thing until your parents get up. And like, mm-hmm. it's not just the cereal and the cartoons. There's like that degree of independence that goes with it. Whereas now we have to do everything ourselves. So where's the fun in that? There's no fun. I did no, appreciate none. TJ like talking to the Prince of Will and being like, I understand you can't like change things. You got to keep your job. You have to buy things like cars and pants. <laughs> you know, which honestly, thanks TJ, thanks for getting it. Yeah, he gets it. Speaking of TJ, this is actually the third TJ voice. Okay, um, Miles Jeffrey. Um, he replaced Andrew Lawrence due to his voice changing from his last appearance in two thousand one. The risk with getting a young man to voice a cartoon child. Yeah, um, but. Miles was 12 when he recorded this. I think he did a great job. Yeah, I think that, so too. He, he captured that child like intelli- but still intelligence that TJ has. A yeah. little snarky, smart ass intelligence of, of TJ. Yeah. yeah, I think you got it. Um, okay, so on Rotten Tomatoes, there's only one critic's um comment. There's not a score okay. or anything. And that's Common Sense Media, which says clever animated film about middle school, which it isn't Common Sense Media. And there's some name calling. <laughs> That's common sense media for you. Oh, dear. So, okay. But you know what? There was enough audience score to get a rating. Do you want to have a guess at what audience that was? Score. 74%. 64%. So close. Ooh, okay. I was close. Okay. I just have two reviews I thought were 
Interesting. Okay. Thankfully, better than recess all growed down. It's spelled grow ed. That's how, why I'm saying it. But it is still a bit of a chore to watch. This again features a couple of different stories. So to be fair, the integration to the film is much improved if it's still a bit messy. We got to watch the all grow down, Arzio. I forgot yeah, that's I on the list too. Uh, not looking forward to it now. Okay. <laughs> After uh, that, that, that was Ryan two stars. Okay, um, Patrick said, this was a good movie, but I didn't like half the cast sounded weirder. Overall, good. Three and a half stars. Three. Because the voices sound different? Because that seems like that's his only complaint. Well, he, yeah, he didn't say anything else. Hmm. Someone mm-hmm. said, pretty funny show to watch. I know I enjoyed watching it. Well, there we go. Well, how many stars did that person give it? Three stars. What? <laughs> But we didn't have a problem with it. It was interesting, but felt like three mini episodes, which it did. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it was made as all one thing to come out together because I was like, wow, these episodes are like super well integrated. What I'm wondering is if they were planning on doing like a reboot or another uh, like season Oh, like in fifth of them grade? in the fifth grade, and Disney was like, "No, thank you. We have our so many episodes. We're good for syndication because that's especially what Disney used to do back in the day with Disney oh, Channel episodes and Disney. For syndication. I think it's sixty five. Is it sixty five? Is yeah, sixty five episodes, okay. and they're like, we're good. Um, I think maybe in development it started that way because like they do refer back to the other episode, to the protest episode in the yeah. in the second oh, in one, the in second the one, clubhouse yeah. one. So I think by the time they got to that, it wasn't like the, you know, like Belle's Magical World where they had three episodes done and they just tacked them together. Like, I think they had enough time to sort of restructure it as a movie. Yeah. It's only an hour long, but like a movie before they released it. And I think it works much better than, yeah. It works much better than the other ones that we've seen. They're much more seamless. Yeah. I think like the Tarzan and Jane one. (laughs) Yeah, this definitely went back to, like, I think they had more time to make it seamless versus the other ones we saw. Yeah. So, overall, what do you think? It was cute. It was cute. If you it like was fun. And you haven't seen this, you will like it. Yeah. It was a good nostalgic watch. Um, definitely, I think it holds up for kids. So, And I think, I think it so. teaches some good lessons, too. So, if you have kids. Yeah, but definitely. And it's like the usual lessons you see in, like, kids programming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think is is nice. The only thing I'm still iffy about is that they make like the kindergartners like savages. Yeah, the, the problematic stuff is still problematic, but mm-hmm. otherwise. Yeah, I love that they had a thing where like like, oh, the kindergartners are now first graders. You gotta talk like a kid now. Like, how do you just turn that off? Now that you say it, them drawing that line of like, well, you're first grade, you have to talk like proper kids now. I'm like, they were very clearly, I don't even want to say it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's still a little racist, Recess. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe a lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of it. 90s racism. Yay. 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 Oh, gosh. It's like, how far have we come? But also, we have not come that far. We have not come as far as I think we want to think we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On that note. On that cheerful note. <laughs> um... If you show your kids this, explain them about the kindergartners and how so that's not okay. Because you don't see the kindergartners like that. Oh, yeah. Actually, not in this do. one. You, don't. you do for like a second, but then it's like gone. Yeah. Which so I think we're going to see them back. a lot more and all grow down. I wonder if our characters are like that. How old are they and all grow down? I don't know. It sounds like they're young. So. <sighs> Something to look forward okay. to. Yeah, that I think that's going to be our next episode. So we'll hop on with that. Boom. And yeah, you mind us at thegeekywaffle.com, geeky underscore waffle on Twitter, the geeky waffle everywhere else, including YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. Join our Patreon. Give us money, please. Money, please. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, that's it. We hope you have a happily ever after until you go to the fifth grade and, you know, you, you have to grow up a little bit. <laughs> the trauma.